this is Dr. Jessica Fush with Farmer's Market Fido. I'm a veterinarian and I am passionate about nutrition. I'm here to help you learn how to cook for your dog confidently. It's very important for us to start choosing what is healthiest for our pets instead of what is most convenient and even what is cheapest. In this video, you will get a complete and balanced dog food recipe that is fish based. My dog Maggie is allergic to chicken, so we do fish and other meats for her. You will be able to print out the recipe with detailed nutritional information, and I'm really proud of this one. It's very pretty. So you'll be able to find the link to get that in the show notes below. If you love cooking for your dog, if you're interested in cooking for your dog, if you have questions about cooking for your dog, if you've been curious about it before and you just want to learn more, make sure to subscribe to this channel because I have lots more videos just like this on their way as well as other informational training videos and fun treat ones too. The first thing that I did was go ahead and cook the quinoa and let it cool. So I did that before I even started this video. I'm going to need two cups of it for the dog food. I have a half cup measure here and I'm just going to scoop out two cups. Now, some nutritionists, veterinary nutritionists, are very, very particular about the ingredients being measured to the T. I am not. A slight, you know, over the cup, a slight under the cup is not going to affect the nutritional profile enough from a day-to-day -day basis for your dog to develop deficiencies, especially if you're home cooking where the nutrients are so much more bioavailable, so much more easily digested, and especially if you're adding in variety. That's the big key right there. So if you fed the exact same recipe day in and day out to your dog, absolutely, if you mess it up, if you start to create drift, they call it, they actually did a study and found that most people do not stick to the recipe that veterinary nutritionists make for them. And it's frustrating to me because I'm not here to fight for our limitations. I don't want to prove that people can do things wrong. I, I know that. We all make mistakes. We all get lazy. We all eat crap food sometimes. Maybe not everybody, but a lot of us. I do. I'm certainly guilty of that. That doesn't mean we can't do better. That doesn't mean we can't do it right when we're taught how to do it right. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to teach you how to cook for your dog correctly. And it's really not that hard. You're perfectly capable. You can do it. You can stick to this diet. No problem. This recipe, the last recipe that I shared that was completely balanced as well. You can go back and forth, switch them up. A lot of dogs do just fine switching up their different proteins, different recipes. There are some dogs with more sensitive stomach. When you change their food, they get diarrhea or something. But if that's happening to your dog, it's a sign that there's a problem, actually. Dogs should be able to eat a variety of foods. And if they can't, that means that their microbiome is off. That means that their immune system is off and they are not healthy. All right. So this is the cod, and I originally had planned to use a pound of cod and a pound of tilapia, but since this was on sale and it's green wise, I went ahead and got this, one package of it, and it was actually 10 ounces. So I'm going to open this up and just cut the fish into bite-sized pieces. probably not necessary because fish breaks up pretty good. So never mind. I'm not going to cut it up. I'm just going to put it in there. Fish flakes when it's cooked, so it should just mix in really well. Pour that in there like that. And then I have this tilapia. And I realize that tilapia is not the best fish. I know that. However, it's inexpensive. And home cooked diet is so much better than a kibble diet. Oh my goodness. The sources of the proteins in there, sometimes you just don't even want to know where they come from. It's awful. So, not all of the sources terrible protein like 
animals that have been euthanized or have been dead for a while or, you know, roadkill, God forbid, God forbid, but some of it does. And so we like to know what's going into our dog's food and that's why we make it ourselves. So we have a pound of tilapia, we have 10 ounces of cod, and then I have 10 ounces of beef liver. Now the beef liver is so nutritious. It's a bit stinky. I actually found this grass-fed beef liver. I think I'm gonna cook the rest of it for myself. I've never ever tried liver and onions. It's so nutritious. People say it tastes good. I've never had it. It, it smells bad to me. So I'm gonna be brave though. I'm gonna try it. I usually eat pretty much anything my dogs eat, but I've skipped the liver. I do it. Please comment below. Let me know. Do you eat liver? Do you like it? Let me know. I'm going to try it. <laughs> but here we go. We have two pouches out of this 16 ounce. And I called for 10 ounces of beef liver. And that's probably only about eight ounces. So let's pull out the food scale. Let's pull out the food scale. And we're going to see how much is in these two packages and just see. The beef liver is so nutritious that it has a lot of B vitamins. It actually is how I'm able to balance these recipes pretty easily with whole foods. It has a lot of copper and it has, so that says it's only five ounces. Hmm. That's interesting. I wonder how much it says if it's the whole bag. Let's try it. says 13.4. All right, so I'm gonna do three bags instead of three of these little pouches. I think my scale is off somehow. Let's tear it again. So that's saying 18.3 ounces. Take one off, 13.8. Take a second one off, 9.4. Okay, I'm happy with that. It makes it faster this way. If you're not super uptight, it's easier to cook. I had somebody comment on one of my, vid my videos recently and they said they used an immersion blender to blend it up and it turned into a really great pate for their dog this is awesome I don't actually own an immersion blender I have so many fun Ew. <laughs> I have so many fun kitchen gadgets and, and tools I have a Vitamix I have a Cuisinart I have an instant pot I don't have an air fryer and I don't have an immersion blender. I'm definitely gonna need to get myself an immersion blender though. That was on my list. It was actually on my Christmas list, but I didn't get it. All right, the next ingredients are the veggies, okay? I have a 10 pound bag of summer squash and green beans. 10 pounds, excuse me, 10 ounces. 10 ounces, a 10 ounce bag. And then we have a 10 ounce bag of broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots. And I have a 15 ounce bag of cubed butternut squash. So these veggies provide a lot of fiber and they add some calories. This is actually a higher carb recipe and a lower fat recipe. If you have a dog who's prone to pancreatitis, this is probably a pretty good recipe for them. And then I have a five ounce package of shiitake mushrooms. Mushrooms have magic powers. Shiitake mushrooms are way better than portobello and they're the ones that you can get at the grocery store fresh. So that's why I use that. You can use frozen mushrooms, that's good too. They have mixed vegetable, mixed mushrooms and then they have a whole bunch of other types in, in the freezer section probably. Uh, but I like to use as many fresh things as I can. And I just like it that it's already cut up and cleaned for me. And these packages are just so handy that it makes it really fast. I'm gonna stir all the veggies up a bit. 
Because they're frozen, they'll add a little bit of water. The fish and the liver has water in it, of course. It's one of the benefits of home cooked diets. Another benefit of home cooked diet is that they actually get water in their food, which they're supposed to. A dry kibble is completely dehydrated. The food that they should eat, that we should eat, that we do eat for the most part, vegetables, meats, is about 70% water. And that is very important. Kiss the baker. I'm not baking, but I'm cooking, so. I get all kinds of puppy kisses. Yes, I do, yes, I do. And this says give thanks. Isn't it so cool? I love that. I love that spoon. I'm really thankful. 400 YouTube subscribers now. So thank you guys who are subscribers. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching it. And thank you for asking questions. It inspires me to keep going, keep spending time making these videos and teaching how you can cook for your dogs. All right, I'm gonna use the entire can of pumpkin. So this is a pretty vitamin A heavy recipe, although it's not over the maximum amount that is safe. Vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. And so you do have to be careful with that one. There is an actual range. Not too many micronutrients actually have a maximum. Vitamin A, vitamin D, calcium, phosphorus. The calcium phosphorus ratio is really important. Vitamin D and vitamin A are the two that are probably the easiest to go over. However, calcium, you really, it's hard to get too much. The maximum is really high. So I'm gonna mix this all in. This is pumpkin goodness. Pumpkin is so good for their poops. <laughs> I'm talking about poop while we're, while we're cooking, but veterinary medicine, that's, that's what it is. They're just gonna love this. And then I'm gonna put this entire can of chickpeas in. I don't even have to take the water out. That'll be some water, okay. There is a little bit of salt in there, which, let's see, 130 milligrams. That's not too much, times three. And then this one here, is no salt added so that's good it won't be too too overly salty I do add in a little bit of an additional salt at the end which I will of course talk about as we get into the recipe itself after we're cooking it here I'm just gonna pour the entire can of sardines in my dog is going to love this absolutely love this and yours will too so I know that people are a little bit concerned well you should be rightfully so about chickpeas and lentils because there's a whole issue with some dietary dilated cardiomyopathy. So diet related dilated cardiomyopathy, which means that the heart stretches out and they are blaming it. A lot of the FDA released a paper that blamed it on grain free foods. But in the research study that was done, it was actually discussed it actually is not grain free foods it says right there in the research paper grain free is not the problem it might be some new unique novel protein sources or carbohydrate sources ingredients in dog food that could be leading to the taurine deficiency or maybe binding up taurine it could be a new genetic predisposition for lack of ability to make taurine or absorb taurine properly that seems to be found in golden retrievers and in a variety of breeds. Personally, I think dilated cardiomyopathy has been in a lot more breeds than we traditionally think about to begin with. Ever since I've been practicing for the last 10 years, I've seen dilated cardiomyopathy in a variety of breeds. I really doubt the diet portion. However, there are some dogs who are corrected when the diet is corrected. But I've never seen a case where they didn't also use medications. So they're correcting the diet, but they're also putting the dog on medications to strengthen the heart muscle. I just don't know how much of it is really diet related. So I don't use chickpeas in all of my recipes. I don't use lentils in all of my recipes. There are some uh, doggy diet books out there, or, or recipe books out there who use a lot more lentils and chickpeas in their recipes than I do. But it is 
a good source of carbohydrate and protein and fiber. And they like them. It makes hummus. It's not all bad. That's what I'm saying. It just, it depends. It depends. So I did put an entire can of garbanzo beans in here. So as I was making my recipe, I was formulating my recipe, the fish is the protein, the main source of protein, right? But that just does not quite give it enough calories. Fish is a very low calorie protein. And so I am gonna be adding in some fats at the end, which make the fat profile balanced and perfect. And I will be adding in a few little supplements just to finalize this recipe. Sardines are another good source of like calcium because the bones are like really teeny tiny little cartilaginous things. So you don't have to worry about cooking them in here. You could add the sardines later and not cook them in there because they're ready to eat right out of the can. But I'm gonna make this into kind of a mush, kind of like a wet dog food. I'm gonna mix in the quinoa at the end. I already have my chickpeas, my pumpkin, my shiitake mushrooms, my three bags of veggies, that's butternut squash, squash blend, broccoli and cauliflower blend with green beans and carrots, the tilapia, the cod, the beef liver, and at the end, after this is cooked, which we're gonna go ahead and start it now, then I will be adding back in the quinoa. You wanna make sure your Instant Pot is turned to seal. And then you just go here, pressure cook. I'm gonna cook it for eight minutes. Leave that like that. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning up and then we'll come back and put it together. While this recipe is cooking, let's talk a little bit about the ingredients that are in it and the profiles, the macronutrient profiles. The protein needs to be the primary source of calories for dogs, then fat, and then carbohydrates in most cases. Now this recipe is a bit higher in carbohydrate actually, it's about 30% carbohydrates. That is mostly from the mixed vegetables that are in there. And these vegetables have additional phytochemicals that are powerful. They're basically magic. So cruciferous vegetables, for example, the broccoli and the cauliflower, have sulforaphane, which is an anti-cancer phytochemical. Now, it's not possible for us to isolate each one of these additional phytochemicals from different plants and use them as supplements. So I just want to add them into my dog's diet by cooking with them. Here and there, I mix it up. I know that there's a lot of phytochemicals we haven't even discovered yet. And that's why I just go ahead and trust nature and use a variety of vegetables and a variety of proteins and organ meats in the recipes that I make. The other thing that's important to talk about are the fats that are in this recipe. I have some short chain fatty acids from the coconut oil that's going in there. I also add in cod liver oil, which is a great source of vitamin D and omega-3s and vitamin E. And then I also add in some olive oil in this recipe too. I haven't done that yet. The fats need to be added at the end after everything is cooled so that they don't go rancid. And I actually add them in at the time I feed my dog. So I'm going to divide the amount that's in this recipe, which for the um, coconut oil, it's one teaspoon. So basically she should get a half a teaspoon. So this is one teaspoon of coconut oil and I weighed it out to make sure that that's exactly how much needs to be in there. And so she will need to get a half a teaspoon of coconut oil each day. And then I also will add in the powders after everything is cooled. This is the salt, iodized salt is a really good source of iodine. And iodine is important for thyroid health. A lot of our dogs these days are having thyroid issues. These are zinc tablets and I'm gonna grind them up and add them in at the end. Zinc is really hard to get in a whole food recipe unless you're using shellfish. But the fats that are important for dogs are linoleic acid, alpha linolenic acid, and DHA and EPA, which DHA and EPA come from fish oils. Those are not actually essential for dogs, 
but they are very, very beneficial. And so that's why I add in the fish oil. And then the short chain fatty acids have been found to be really good for dogs for seizure issues, which my dog does not have seizures, but it's just a variety of fats that help to cover all the bases. And again, I keep going back to this point of variety. It's because I want to make sure all the bases are covered. This is my handy dandy jar of eggshell powder. Yes, we eat a lot of eggs. This is really great stuff. And I have a recipe and a video on this that you can actually print out how much calcium your dog needs based on their weight. And I'm gonna go ahead and post that here, link that here. I'm gonna put it up here so that you can click on this video if you wanna to go to that later. But finish watching this recipe first, of course, because we haven't finished and all of the details are important. This is the iodized salt. I mean, it's just the classic one. This recipe has about 20 kilocals per ounce. My dog is 50 pounds and she needs about a thousand kilocalories per day. You can go to Dog Nutrition Alliance and they have a very handy dandy dog food calorie calculator. I love it. I use it all the time. It's just so easy. And yes, of course there's a formula and I can do it and I can pull out my calculator, but it's online. Go ahead. I'll link it below so you can figure out how many calories your dog needs a day. My 50 pound dog needs about a thousand calories a day. And because this recipe has about 20 calories per ounce, that means she needs 50 ounces per day, which is about six and a quarter cups. So I'll put three cups in the morning, three cups in the evening with just a little bit more. Basically, I am a little bit relaxed. I know you guys know that about me. A little bit more. Six and a quarter is like three heaping cups, right? And if it's a little bit over, it's fine. If it's a little bit under, it's fine. She can get treats throughout the day. She still has room for that because she can really eat about 1,100 calories. But for her main meals, I'm going to split this recipe into two meals and that's going to be three cups each. It seems like more food than what you will feed if it's kibble because it has a lot more moisture content and that's why it's going to be more. And surprisingly enough, most of the time you're going to see less poop. You're going to feed more food, but you're going to see less poop. So your dog is going to feel more satisfied be able to absorb the nutrients from it. And the pumpkin that's in this is really gonna make those stools nice and solid. If you are seeing some loose stool from changing the diet, maybe next time just change over a little bit slower. Maybe you need to supplement a probiotic. Maybe you need a specialized diet formulation from me. This is for healthy adult dogs that don't have issues. And my dogs can just literally eat other than chicken, they can just eat anything that I cook for them. I cook a different meal every other day and they're totally fine with it because they have a healthy microbiome and a really healthy gut. But if your dog does not, then maybe you need to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I actually have links on my website, which of course the website will be in the show notes. It's keyvetcare.com. It's that simple. There's a telemedicine link and we can talk about diet. There's a couple options there. You can use a questionnaire form or you can have a actual zoom meeting with me and we can talk about all the details for those of you that don't need a specialized diet formulation i am actually going to be doing a webinar pretty soon too here in a couple of weeks i'm putting together a training webinar on dog nutrition and cooking for your dog so if you're really curious about that shoot me a comment and i'll make sure or follow me on instagram that's probably the easiest so if you go to instagram and you go to key vet care so at key vet care on Instagram and send me a DM. I'll make sure to send you the link personally because I don't actually have the link yet, but I will very, very soon. I have the training, I have the class already put together and I'm really excited about it. It's really just not that hard. I know I can make it simple. I can teach you how to cook for your dog confidently and your dog will be so much happier, healthier. You'll avoid additional costs from veterinary visits and also just the cost of pain and suffering from your dog having skin issues and joint issues and GI issues and cancer down the road. I mean, it's really so valuable to do this work. So if you're here and you're watching this video and you're making this recipe, 
give yourself a little pat on the back because you are an amazing dog parent and your dog is super lucky to have you. These are my 10 zinc tablets. I'll make sure I see my 10. I think I might have more. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh yeah. I originally thought there was gonna be 20. But I went back to the formulation and I realized that I could make it balanced with 10. So I just love doing this. First, I actually have used this for coffee recently. So I need to I need to wash it. So I washed it out. We all need some immune system boosting these days. Whew. Doesn't taste that great though. But it's not very much, so your dog won't really taste it in that whole recipe. Don't worry. And the eggshell powder and the salt is yummy. So mix all that together. Get most of it out of there. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I made this recipe really quick to make because I have three kids. So I want you to know that if I can run my own house call veterinary practice, have a five-year-old, six-year-old, and 12-year-old in three different schools that I drive and pick up, <laughs> although I do hire help sometimes for that pickup part, and my husband pitches in too, he's really good. But I have a business, I have an online business, I'm continuing to create videos like this because I know it's so important for more people to know how to cook for their dogs so that dogs can be healthier all over the world. I have a podcast called the Biohack Your Pets podcast, and I try to work out and be healthy myself, getting back into that now that the gym's back open, thank goodness. But if I can do it, you can do it. Now, there is a little, you know, it's a little bit easier for me because I love to cook, and maybe you don't love to cook. So if you don't love to cook, there are done-for-you brands out there. There's a bunch of different ones that will ship straight to your door that you put in your freezer, and those work too, okay? There's a bunch of different brands. You can just order online and have them shipped to your door if you don't want to do it. But the reason that I like to do it for myself most of the time, and I, and I love a lot of those brands. I've used them. I do use them. I continue to use them. I feed raw as well. And I talk about that on my podcast a lot. But the reason that I like to cook for my dog is it is a little bit more economical than the raw sometimes. Um, depending on the dog, I think that some dogs just do better with cooked food. I use food as therapy. So I am a certified food therapist through the Chi Institute, the same place that I, went to, that I went to school for acupuncture. And a lot of the energetics of food are not just in the meats. Yes, of course, the meats have their own energetics and fish is a cooling food typically, but, or neutral, cooling or neutral. But a lot of the vegetables have a lot of magic powers. And we don't really want to give our dogs too many raw vegetables. I do have a video that is a raw veggie anti-cancer mix, which I will link here. And that you can download a nice recipe and it makes this big old batch of dog food topper of raw vegetables. That's why I didn't put any uh, garlic in here because it's in there. Okay. So I do feed my dogs raw vegetables, but a lot of times I also feed them cooked vegetables, which are a lot easier to digest. All right, let's try this again. It's interesting, this recipe doesn't pressurize quite like the rice and quinoa do. But it's releasing some pressure. Normally, get this huge Look at that bubbling, delicious this. Look at this. Look at that. Yes, fish stew. That's what that is. Do not touch this part. It's very, very hot. 
Okay, just as I suspected, the fish is breaking up really well. Now, the liver is not as much, so I'm gonna probably need to get in there and cut that up. Some of it did, some of it didn't. I just wanna make sure that it's distributed really evenly throughout. It probably makes more sense to go ahead and cut it up before you put it in. I'm cooking new things all the time, so I'm always experimenting and everything that I do. Choppity chop, 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 chop. I love kitchen scissors. They're the best scissors ever. My dad's looking at me. You can hear his dog barking. It's like, who has time to cook for their dogs? I said, well, you do because you're retired. Uh, which means really we all do. I do, if I do, we all do. And I realize some people don't want to and that's okay. But it's really important for all of us to spend a little bit more time on the food that we eat. Spend more time making our own food for our own family because then we know what's really in it. And then we can also put in the love. That's the thing. I use food as medicine because food is medicine. But I also understand that the energetics that go into the food, the energy that goes into the food as you're cooking it, I'm putting in love here. I'm putting in love for my dog in this recipe. I'm putting in love in this video for all of you. And that matters. Oh, there's a big chunk. I'm gonna wait until this is completely cooled down before I add in the powders. And like I said before, I'm gonna add the oils in last. Beautiful, it's beautiful, man. And even with the sardines and the liver in there, it's just fresh. It's just fresh, it doesn't stink. Really, it doesn't even stink. Mm. It smells good. It's like the fish, the sardines and the liver even, it's just like this beautiful stew. Man, what a lucky dog I have. I'm lucky to have her too. And your dogs are gonna feel so lucky to have this dinner. Oh my goodness. Just going to love you. And it's mixed in so well that you're not gonna really need to worry about the picky dogs, probably, uh, when it comes to the veggies. There's some dogs that don't love veggies as much. Um, but it's mixed in so well, I don't think you're gonna have an issue. If you do, that immersion blender would really, really help with that. In the interest of time in making this video, I'm going to go ahead and use my beautiful new bowl, my giant bowl, so I can put this in here, which will allow it to cool faster. That instant pot. Is hot, so be careful. Maggie's back. She's like, oh my god, it smells so good. Mom, can I just have it now already? We go ahead and put the quinoa in because it can get hot and will hurt it. I know, baby. I know, baby. I know. It's almost ready, baby. Look at this goodness. Look at this goodness. Look at this goodness. Oh my goodness. It's kind of surprising that this only makes two and a half, maybe three days worth of food for her. But. Good nutrition right there. Okay, we have to let it cool where it's not steaming at all before we put in our powders. And then we have to mix that in very thoroughly. And then on top of her bowl that I serve her, I will put her 
half a teaspoon of coconut oil for today, as well as a half a teaspoon of the fish oil and a half a teaspoon of the, actually a third of a teaspoon of the cod liver oil. <laughs> a third of a teaspoon, do we have a third of a teaspoon? Let's do a quarter of a teaspoon because there's a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to the vitamin D and E and omega-3s in this recipe. It's not like really close to the minimum required amount and it's not close to the maximum amount that could actually harm them. Now, you don't want to be giving like four teaspoons of cod liver oil every single day. That would be too much vitamin D and that would be bad. Maggie just could not even wait. So I'm going to add a little bit of this eggshell powder separately, about a half a teaspoon. And then I keep forgetting that I added olive oil because I didn't originally add olive oil to the recipe, but it was a really low fat recipe and I wanted Maggie to have a little bit more fat and your dogs too, because most dogs don't need it to be that low fat unless they're prone to pancreatitis. So olive oil fish oil and coconut oil and I went ahead and mixed all that in and she's just sitting here just waiting, just waiting so patiently, so excitedly. Mm. Maggie, are you so excited? Are you so excited? Are you so excited? Are you Is it delicious? You see those little scratches on her head? She started to have a little reaction because she actually got into the cat's food, which has chicken. Maggie, don't do that. You can't have chicken. And also then spring started to spring here in Florida. But she's all better. We fixed her up. You can see that it's healed. The hair will grow back in. She has a nice shiny coat. She's turning 11 in March. We're going to have some upcoming videos about birthday party food for dogs here in the next couple of weeks because Maggie's turning 11. It is time to mix in the powders. That is, again, salt, eggshell powder for calcium, and zinc tablets ground up in the coffee grinder. Mix and mix and mix and mix and mix really thoroughly so that it's evenly distributed. And since I'm going to be using this so quickly, I could put the oils in, but I just do it at the time of feeding. That's one of the problems with the oils in actual pre made dog food is that. They go bad. They're not very shelf stable. They become rancid 